Okay, before I start talking about the placebo and experimenter effect, I just want to quickly go over the concepts of extraneous and confounding variables. So in terms of what an extraneous and a confounding variable have in common, they're both variables outside of the research design that have a potentially unwanted effect on the dependent variable. The difference is that an extraneous variable may affect the dependent variable, as identified in the discussion section of your research report. And this effect will occur at some random point in the experiment. A confounding variable, on the other hand, has affected the dependent variable systematically throughout the experiment. So an example of this is if a repeated measures design has been used and it hasn't been counterbalanced, there would be an order effect. And this has been discussed in one of my other clips. An example of a extraneous variable is particularly likely when we are using small sample sizes in an independent group's design. We might have participant related variables, for instance, a gender imbalance, an age imbalance, or other demographics that might actually affect the dependent variable. A placebo effect is where the expectations of subjects can have an extraneous effect on the DV, hence the results, rather than purely the manipulation of the independent variable. So in terms of a practical example, let's go with painkillers. Now there's a natural endorphin in your brain called opiate which has pain killing properties which can be activated either by the actual painkiller or a placebo, i.e. the mere belief that a drug has a painkilling properties. So therefore, what we need to do to test the effectiveness of the painkiller is to use a single blind procedure, where we ensure that the subjects are blind as to whether they are in the control group, which is given a fake drug, a placebo, i.e. placebo derived from the Latin word, which means shall please, and they would serve as a baseline measure. Or, if the actual subjects are in the experimental group, which is actually exposed to the IV, i.e. they're given the real treatment. An experimenter effect, on the other hand, is where the actions or the characteristics of the experimenter may bias the results. Classic example of this is the little hands experiment. So hands was supposedly an intelligent counting horse that would perform mathematical sums, his owner claimed was found that with further analysis that Hans was actually reading the cues that the owner was inadvertently giving to the horse. So rather than actually counting three plus three, it was literally reading the body language, etc., of the actual owner. Therefore, a experimenter effect in terms of the actions, even though they weren't unintentional of the owner, affected the DV. In order to overcome the experimenter effect, we need to use a double-blind procedure where an assistant allocates subjects to either the control or experimental groups so that both the subjects and the experimenter are unaware as to who's in the C group and who's in the E group. And this needs to be maintained for not only the instructional part of the experiment, but also the treatment of the data. So again, the experimenter's actions in terms of the treatment of data doesn't have an extraneous effect on the DV.